In this Inkscape lesson, we're going to learn how to use custom markers and Inkscape version 1.2's marker editing feature to create a cute snake brush. To begin creating the snake, let's switch to the squares and rectangles tool here and create a thin rectangle. Now let's give it rounded corners by grabbing the circular handle at the top right and dragging it down as far as it will go. For the color, I'll give this a green fill. Okay, we can zoom in some by holding Ctrl and scrolling up the mouse wheel. Now we need to turn this into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. To give it a tail, let's switch to the node tool here and select the three nodes on the left. Now let's turn on this button in the controls bar, which will show the transformation handles. And now we can grab this handle on the left and drag it more to the left. Okay, we can turn this button back off now. We can also grab this node on the right here, hold control and drag it to the right a little more. Next, let's create some eyes by switching to the circles and ellipses tool, holding control and creating a circle on the right side. We can make this white, then switch to the select tool and put it about where we want it. Let's now duplicate the circle by pressing Ctrl D, make the duplicate black, then hold Shift and Ctrl and scale it down some. Let's now select both of these circles and let's group them with Ctrl G. Then duplicate it with Ctrl D, hold Ctrl, and move it down here. Now we can hold Shift and select the other eye, then group them with Ctrl G. Then let's hold Shift and select the body, open the Align and Distribute dialog with this button up here, and with the last selected chosen in the Relative To box, let's click this button here to center the eyes horizontally on the body. We can also give the snake a stripe or something. For this, I'll just create a black rounded rectangle in here. Then I'll switch to the Select tool, hold Shift and select the body, then center the stripe horizontally on the body. I'll give it a forked tongue as well. For this, I'll create a rectangle here. Make it red. And click this button up here to make the corner sharp. Then I'll turn it into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. Switch to the Node tool, select the two nodes on the right side. Click this button up here to insert a new node at the midpoint, then select just the new node, hold control and move it to the left. Now I'll select these two nodes on the left, turn on the transformation handles again with this button, then hold shift and drag in one of the scale handles here. And I'll go ahead and turn the transformation handles back off. Then I'll switch to the select tool and click this button up here to put the tongue below the rest of the snake. Alright, now we need to select all of these objects and group them with Ctrl G. Okay, to make it so we can use this snake as a brush, we're going to need to turn the tail part into a marker, the center part into a marker, and the head part into a marker. First, let's click this button up here to create a clone of it. We're going to use clones so that we can edit the snake later and have the changes also appear in any paths we create using the snake brush. This will make sense later in the video. Okay, now let's move the clone down here. For this clone, we want to hide everything but the tail part. To do this easily, we'll use clipping. Let's first turn on snapping up here, then let's switch to the squares and rectangles tool, snap to the node up here, then drag down and to the left until it covers the entire tail part. And we might have to click this button again to sharpen the corners. Now we can go to the select tool and select both of these, then right click and go to set clip. Okay, we can go ahead and turn the snapping back off now. Let's select the original snake up here and clone it again, which we can do by pressing Alt D. Let's move it down here. To pan, I'm holding down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. For this one, we want to hide all but a small sliver of the center part. So let's switch to the squares and rectangles tool again and create a thin rectangle over a small part here. Then we can select them both, right click and set clip. 
Okay, let's clone the original snake again with Alt D and move it down here. And this time, of course, we just want the head part. So let's go to the squares and rectangles tool again and create a rectangle covering all of the head. Select them both. Right click and set clip. Okay, to turn these into markers, we can select one and go to Object, Objects to Marker. Let's do the same for the other two. Alright, now we can finally start using the snake as a brush. To do this, let's first switch to the pin tool here and create a path with some curves. And I find that this works better if we click and drag with each node that we create, including the first and last nodes. So I'll click and drag here to create the first node, then click and drag in a couple more places, then click and drag for the last node, then right click to finish the path. Next, to add our snake markers to the nodes of the path, Let's open the Fill and Stroke dialog with this button up here and go to the Stroke Style tab. Now under Markers, let's click this first box to show the marker options. The three markers we created are at the top here. They're showing as gray boxes, and I believe that's because we're using clones. But it's no big deal because they should be listed here in the order in which we created them. So for the first node, let's click the first box, and now we have the tail of the snake. Okay, for the markers of the center nodes, Let's choose the center box, and for the marker of the last node, let's choose the last box. Alright, now we need to make it so these center markers are spread out across the entire path. We could just add a whole bunch of extra nodes in here, but that will make it very difficult to edit the curves of the path. A better way is to use the roughen path effect. So first, we need to open the path effects dialog by going to path, path effects. Then let's click this plus button down here, and choose roughen here. Now we simply want to uncheck the Shift Nodes option here. There we go. Now we can still easily edit the nodes and curves of this path. The only problem we have now is that the first and last markers are not positioned correctly. To fix this, let's go back to the Fill and Stroke dialog, and let's show the first node marker options again. Now we can click this Edit on Canvas button here which gives us these handles for adjusting the marker. So we can zoom in some and use the center handle to move the marker until it's in the correct position. That's better. Now we can do the same for the head. And if we switch to another tool, then back to the node tool, we can edit the nodes of the path again. A cool thing about this is that it actually saves our marker adjustments to the markers themselves. So we can create another path with the pin tool, Add the markers. Add the rough and path effect. And turn off shift nodes. Though we might have to adjust a handle or two to get it working right. There we go. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, the reason we use clones of the original snake as markers is so we can edit the original and have it edit the markers as well. For example, if we select the original with the select tool, we can adjust its width and it will also adjust the width of the markers on the paths. And we can double click the group to enter it, then change the colors of the objects and it will change for the markers as well, which is pretty awesome. Alright, so that's how we can create a snake brush using markers. I encourage you to try this method out with other objects for different types of brushes. And you can actually even do this with imported images, which sounds like a good topic for a future video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.